So we're standing in the vineyards right outside Sotomano. Sotomano is in the uh, little uh, commune of Cota, which is right outside Barbaresco. Uh, so we're gonna go inside and we're gonna taste some great Barbaresco, hopefully. Uh, they do a lot of single vineyard stuff, so let's go see what they've got. I'll be honest, I like the wines of Barbaresco a little bit more than those of Barolo. So our first visit on the last day of winery tours has me feeling pretty good. Sotomano is a smaller operation. Inside this modest but beautiful farmhouse is the entire production. The cellar is exactly as you might imagine, dark, rustic, and cool, even a little musty. Exactly the right conditions for aging great wine. Andrea, the second generation winemaker, is an energetic guy who loves working in the vineyards. Like many great winemakers, he's a great farmer first. Since Sotomano owns the vineyards right across the street, we get to go out among the grapes to continue our conversation. The grapes, particularly the lighter ones like Dolcetto, are on the brink of Verasion. The hardier ones, the Nebbioles and Barberas, will begin their transformation soon. Andrea has just finished green harvesting. That's where you take some grape bunches off the vines to let the plants concentrate their efforts in fewer bunches, increasing the quality of the flavors and you can taste it in the wines. Making a number of single vineyard bottles, Sotomano is known for their good quality, and Andrea lets us taste the different vineyards side by side. He even opens up a 2004 vintage of the Falsoni to let us see how it's progressing. It was like night and day, and yet not. The 2004 was softer and more drinkable than the 2009, but clearly maintained the same vineyard characteristics that the 2009 showed. There were rich flavors of tobacco and cherry in both, but the 2004 was more complex and rounder. Both of them are going to age beautifully. We're here at Azalea in Castiglione Faletto. It's right off the main road in Piedmont. Uh, we're going to go inside and taste some of their wines, get a chance to see their winery, uh, and hopefully we'll even get a chance to taste their reserva. Azienda Agricola Azalea di Luigi Scavino, the full name of the winery, dates back to 1920. Our guide for the visit is Lorenzo, the fifth generation of winemakers in his family. One of the first things to catch your eye when you walk into the tasting room is the grandfather clock to the right. This was made by Lorenzo's ancestor back in the 1930s, and it still keeps time to this day. Azalea's wines come in from the vineyard and enter stainless steel fermentation tanks. They are aged completely in French barrique. Then they are pumped from the barrique to the blending tanks to get ready for bottling. We actually get to see the pump in action today, which is something I've never seen before. Once bottled, the wines are stored until shipping. Each of these brick sections can hold seven or eight thousand bottles. I'd hate to be the guy that ruined that. Like Paolo Scavino, Azalea has a library of older vintages dating back a number of years. Barolos, which can age for decades, begin to turn orange or brown in color, and the tastes and aromas start to show more leather and tobacco qualities. Azalea makes several single vineyard wines, as well as a Reserva, in exceptional years. As we leave the winery, we are hit with our first extreme weather during our visit to Piedmont. A rainstorm dumps rain on us as we drive back to our apartments. It's quite an interesting and unexpected way to conclude our winery visits in Piedmont, but it only lasts an hour or so, and then it's back to the sun and warmth. 